Hey everyone, Stephanie Wong here. Have you ever wished your AI experience could access the power of Google search? Well, now you can get more accurate and fresh results from Gemini models with the help of grounding with Google search that just shipped in Gemini API and AI Studio. Grounding with Google search in Google AI Studio and the Gemini API allows developers to use results from Google search engine to improve the accuracy and freshness of Gemini's models responses. To break this down, we are here with Srista, Group Product Manager, leading the charge on the feature. Hey, Srista. Hey, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. Excited to chat about this with you and the folks here. First of all, what was the motivation to bring grounding with Google search to the Gemini API and AI Studio? We wanted to basically use the power of Google search to help developers get better responses to whatever in whatever applications they are building. And you know, this better here could mean, as you said, more accurate, more current, with richer detail. But we wanted developers to have this optionality. And you know, it's also a feature that developers have been asking us for a while. Thanks for breaking that down. Can you actually give us a demo of how grounding with Google search works? All right. Uh, yeah, excited to do a demo of this feature. Uh, so here we are in the Google AI Studio interface. I've, I've clicked on create a new prompt. Um, on the left, I've selected my model and I have my temperature at a reasonable value of one. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put in my query. Um, and let me run this query first without turning on search grounding. So as you can see, it says Ted Lasso won the Outstanding Comedy Series, and that's not true. Ted Lasso won in 2023. And this, by the way, happens often with these models because uh, 2024 Emmy Awards may have been past its knowledge cutoff. So this is what we got without search grounding turned on. Now let me click on compare mode in AI Studio, which is this nifty new mode that lets you compare various models or various configs. So here I'll leave the model the same. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna turn on search grounding. So I do wanna call out that we provide developers with two layers of control. The first layer is this toggle, as which decides whether search grounding should be turned on or not. The equivalent in the API is uh, deciding to call search grounding as a tool or not. So once you turn this on though, as a developer, there is an additional layer of control with dynamic retrieval. Uh, we can go a little more detail into what dynamic retrieval does, but the basic intuition is um, the higher the value on the slider, the more selective uh, the system is going to be with deciding whether to ground or not. In other words, if you have the slider at zero, ground, it's always going to ground. If you have it at one, it's never going to ground. Um, and so if you have it uh, at say 0.7, it is selectively going to ground on certain queries. Um, and what often happens is the selectivity is correlated with how recent the information is that's needed on this query. Um, so this is where we urge developers to play around with this slider and decide what's the best value for their application. Um, so we, I'm going to put it at say 0.2 here. Save. And remember, the lower the value, the more likely it is to ground. And then I'm gonna rerun this query. And there we go. We see that it gets the correct answer, hacks. So that's one benefit of search uh, grounding. You get a more accurate answer. You get a more recent answer. It also provides more detail around the answer. So it says that the bear was nominated in the same category, but hacks won. Um, and then it provides these additional links, which, the, which are the sources from which grounding pulls its information. And in these, this is important because uh, users can click on these sources and really uh, get more information, validate the information that's shown uh, by the model. And you know, this, is, this is where we benefit from the richness of the ecosystem that has all this information out there. 
Um, and at the bottom, you have what are called Google search suggestions. And this is basically um, what is equivalent query would have looked on search. So here's a demo of how search grounding works and how it provides more accurate and fresher answers. Amazing. Thanks so much for walking through that. I'm really curious, though, how it actually works. How does grounding with Google search work? Yeah, so this is uh, this is roughly at a high level what happens. Um, as I said, the first decision, of course, is whether search grounding should be turned on or not. If it's not turned on, the model never grounds its answers. But let's assume search grounding is turned on. The first thing that happens is the query is sent to a classifier, which gives it a prediction score. The prediction score is a number between 0 to 1, which determines how likely is this query going to benefit from search grounding. So let's say the query uh, gets a certain number, in this case, 0.3, a random query. This is where that number is compared against the dynamic retrieval threshold set by the developer. So basically, the logic here is, if the prediction score on a certain query is higher than the threshold set by dynamic retrieval, the system will send it for grounding. If the prediction square score is lower than the threshold, then it won't be grounded. So let's say in this case, the query, as I said, had a score of 0.3. And our threshold is, as you saw, set at 0.2. So we send it for grounding. At this point, uh, this query gets rewritten into more appropriate queries for search. Uh, we then extract the results from search based on that query, based on those queries, and we re-rank those results and blend them together um, to create an optimal context to send to the prompt. So again, we use the query to get the appropriate information from search, and we then added it into the prompt that we're sending to the model. And we find that this act of create getting that additional information from search and adding it to the model will end up in the outcome from the model, the response of the model, just being an overall better answer. So that's roughly how grounding with Google search works. Thank you for walking through that whole thing. It's great to see the granularity of control, but it's also easy to use for developers. Um, zooming out just a little bit, I want to understand some cool use cases that you've seen this used for. Yeah, you know, as, as we keep saying here, right, like uh, the, the major use case here is uh, for applications which have a high bar for factuality and accuracy. And, you know, search grounding really helps with that. Um, in a lot of cases, we have seen people use this to build like research tools uh, that benefit from, you know, both the, uh, the information that search grounding pulls up to make the answers more accurate, but also the additional richer detail that search grounding brings to the question. So we do see it for a lot of research type use cases. Um, but, you know, in a certain a couple of interest, other interesting use cases we've seen is one is for translation, uh, using grounding to make the translation more accurate and more rooted in the context of the language being translated to. Uh, we've seen it in certain cases for people who, you know, are probably trying to get um, like a, a coding or a technical troubleshooting type of application and search grounding helps to find relative doc relevant documentation. Um, and this is where, again, I want to call out that, you know, this feature has almost a twofold benefit. First is the actual answer is better. But second is all the sources that we link out to, which you can click on to get more information um, from the original sources. And people, uh, people, all, uh, people use that functionality also in their applications. Yeah, I think sources are a key feature here. And it's, it's great to see translation as a use case. I never thought of that one. And yeah. this is fascinating because only Google has Google Search for this to offer. And under the surface, I think a lot of people might think, oh, it's Google Search. It must have been easy to integrate. But really, it must have had some difficult technical challenges that you underwent. Can you share more? 
Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, um, you know, several different groups inside of Google had to come together and work together to make this feature available to developers. So, you know, there is Google Cloud, um, through which, um, you know, the Gemini API and Google AI Studio are part of Google Cloud. Uh, we've been working closely with uh, Google DeepMind, of course, in terms of like making the model better, making the model be able to use this uh, tool better. Um, and then there's Google Search, of course, and all the, you know, meticulousness and uh, thoroughness that Search brings to any product that it's involved in. Uh, and, you know, the intent that everyone had was ultimately to use Google search to make our generative AI offerings better. Uh, but as you can imagine, a lot of opinions, a lot of requirements, a lot of, uh, a lot of controls had to be thought through to bring this feature uh, to our developers. Yeah, and sort of um, continuing on that thread, for developers who are building applications using grounding with Google Search, what are some best practices to keep in mind? Yeah, I think, um, you know, so there's two kinds of best practices, I would say. One is in terms of just uh, quality and cost. I think uh, one of the things I want to say is um, we talked about the dynamic retrieval feature. Um, and we uh, what value you set that threshold to do you set it to zero where it will always ground or do you set it closer to one where it grounds very selectively we have tested at our end on our eval sets and that's where we felt that 0.7 which is the default value is an ideal value where um, you know for most developers they will want search grounding on recent on the queries which require more recent answers and we felt like 0.7 based on our testing was a good default value for that uh, but best practice we really recommend developers who use this to test it out on their uh, eval sets on their use cases and see what's the best value there, uh, threshold value. Uh, so that's on the quality front. Uh, there is, of course, also a cost implication to this. So again, urge developers to think through what is the best cost performance trade-off for them. Um, and then in terms of a couple of other things to keep in mind, um, you know, displaying those supporting links that we showed, the citation sources are highly recommended. Um, you know, we hugely benefit from our publisher ecosystem. We want to make sure they get all the credit they deserve. Um, it also makes for a better answer in general if people are able to use these sources and sort of go down that path of getting more and more information beyond what the initial answer was that the LLM model provided. Uh, so that's one. And then the second thing is uh, when you use grounding with Google search and you receive Google search suggestions, which were those queries right at the bottom of the demo, um, it is recommended that developers use the search suggestions in production and in their applications. Thank you. Yeah, those are great suggestions here and recommendations. Now, I know we talked about some use cases earlier, but what are some fun use cases that you've used this for? I know that we have Halloween, we have Diwali, so anything that you've tried? Yeah, this is very topical because I'm behind on my Halloween costume this year. Lots going on. Um, so let's see if Search Grounding can help me come up with a costume idea. So for this, just for fun, I'm going to use a different model. And let me ask, what are some on-trend Halloween costumes for 2024? All right. Um, and as you can see here, grounding is not turned on. It is worth calling out that we have search grounding available for both Pro, Flash, as well as 8B. Uh, so yeah, so we see the this answer, and it's a little bit of a generic answer. Uh, and so I think, let's see if we can do better with search grounding turned on. So I'm going to go back into compare mode. I'm going to... Go in here, 
I'm going to turn on surge grounding and then I'm going to go in here and just let's set, let's set this to about the 0.2. This is the dynamic retrieval value. Um, and let's rerun this and see what happens. So here we go. It seems like um, Beetlejuice characters, characters from movies, viral personalities, these are all certain trends. Um, and, you know, one of the things here, especially for a Halloween costume idea, I would benefit from just reading through the content that really powered this answer. And so I can literally click on the first link here, which uh, you can't see, but it's literally the top 25 trending Halloween costumes of 2024 as declared by the Smithsonian Magazine. So I can be sure that this is providing fresh information for me as I decide my Halloween costume for 2024. Amazing. Well, I can't wait to see which one you pick for Halloween. But in the meantime, where can developers go to learn more about this feature? Yeah, I mean, just head to Google AI Studio to try it out or uh, turn it on uh, using tools in the API um, and you're off to the races. All right. Well, thank you so much, Trista, for taking time to show us. And I hope everyone can take the time to try it out for yourselves. Thank you, Stephanie.